Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have a jam-packed video to get into today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive into it with the economic data that came out today. And we're going to go ahead and pull it up on CNBC right now for all of us. And it's not the two-year treasury, but we can click on that. It is the wholesale inflation data. Wholesale inflation prices rose 0.3% in July, higher than expectations. We were expecting 0.2%. For a couple of reasons, this is good, but also bad. So wholesale prices, PPI, stands for Producer Price Index. It's the inflation gauge of producers. CPI, Consumer Price Index, is for consumers. Typically, if wholesale prices rise and go higher, that means consumer prices eventually will go higher. So it's kind of a bad le leading indicator for what CPI could do in the future. But recently, things have gotten a little more interesting because the Chinese e economy is in deflation. So they're having a deflation problem. That's worse than inflation. So at one point, you have to sit here and say, is 0.3% wholesale prices or 0.3% month over month, that's 3.6% annualized, that big of a problem. Yes, but 0.2%, that's not as bad at 2.4%. That's going to mean more growth in the future, believe that or not. Deflation is the main reason why the Japanese economy peaked out in the 1980s, 1989, the Japanese stock market hit its high and it's never recovered since. So don't tell me that inflation is worse than deflation. It's not. So on that front, it's okay. But again, on the leading indicator side for CPI, not so good. Now it looks like the Fed is certainly going to pause as far as what the, the markets are currently pricing in for the next Fed meeting on September 20th. That's an 89% chance that we will actually uh, get a pause. And then you start cutting rates seven months from now in March. So that could come a lot sooner. You guys know the historical performance of the markets when the Fed starts to cut rates. It's because they were either slow to address a problem or slow to address the fact that they raise rates too much. Typically, the Fed, by the time they start cutting rates, it's a couple months too late, kind of the same way that they uh, didn't raise rates fast enough. So all of this is important. This is important for you as an investor in AMC that is waiting for the short squeeze for a couple different reasons. If the markets do turn risk on and we go back to an environment that is similar to, to that, you know, 2021, well, that could obviously be positive because you could get larger rallies in that point and that's if the economy does well we don't go into a recession and inflation comes down and the fed is able to pause and then start cutting rates and we don't get a market crash well that's great right that's your best case scenario as as far as the broader markets that could help out amc on the other hand if the markets continue to react the way that they have been reacting and continue to fall, that's going to put a lot of pressure on hedge funds and institutions and some of that collateral requirement amounts. Because when stocks start to fall, even if you're in short positions, and, and, and most shorts are not just in short positions, right? They're in other different names as well. Well, the requirements for margins start to increase because the risk out there in the markets is also increasing. So that can put a lot of pressure on hedge funds, institutions that are short in AMC. Now, I don't know exactly what's causing the move higher with AMC stock today. If you Google AMC stock news like I did or you look on Twitter, you're really not going to find anything new. So I think to, to one degree, you're still seeing the effect of good earnings with AMC, but potentially some of this collateral getting squeezed as well could also be having a positive effect on AMC. Now, I also want to point out, not a lot of stocks are in the green today, right? The NASDAQ is down 1%. So this is very exciting. So in a weird way, the bad news that we continue to get for Europe, 
for China. Now a little bit more for the U.S. is having a positive effect to AMC. Really it's different uh, than, than what we have seen in the past, right? Where kind of AMC would sell off more than the broader markets. That has changed and something is happening here. Ladies and gentlemen, something is happening. The biggest thing for AMC we know is, is going to be the court proceedings, right? If this goes the way of shareholders and there's no reverse split, stock's going to go crazy. We've seen it once and we'll likely see it again as far as what the charts are telling you. If, if you listen to the charts, it looks like there's good news coming. That's just the simplest way to put it. The charts look very, very bullish. Now, let's pull up some of the indicators. You got the moving averages. That's good. MACD, uh, perfect. MACD is at some of the strongest levels it's, it's, it's been at since back here in May of 2023 when AMC stock rallied from the low of about $4.67 within about a week and a half, two weeks, and uh, rallied to over $6 per share. MACD is looking pretty dang good, pretty strong right here. The moving averages. The 20-day moving average is breaking above the 200-day moving average today. Look, well, by the end of the day, it will. It's right, like basically converged uh, right now. So that is very positive. Also, now you've you've just been holding support at the 100-day moving average for a while now. This whole kind of movement. So that's good. You could also make the argument that a cup and handle is forming as well on a kind of shorter term basis you kind of get this this cup formation right you came up you're kind of forming the handle right now if you want to look at this uh just near term right usually cup and handles take a little bit longer to develop but this is a very near term cup and handle very positive the rsi as well the rsi is at 56.91 even on days like today where you're up two and a half percent. The RSI is not going up that much, which is positive. You don't want to see the, the RSI breaching up to overbought levels around 70 when the stock's up two and a half percent. We've seen that in the past where just small moves in AMC sends the RSI up huge. And this looks very strong. Like ever since you hit June 23rd, the RSI has just been getting stronger and stronger. Like compared to any other time, the RSI, uh, well, back here, the RSI did look really strong as well. This continued upward trend, not necessarily just a big spike. Uh, last time the RSI was this strong, well, back in June of 2022, you rallied from a low of $6 to a high of 17 Now, I don't know if that's going to happen this time around. Surely, if the courts do rule in favor of uh, no split, no dilution, that could be positive in the short term. Or if AMC were to cancel this court proceeding and say, hey, we're not going to do this split. There's too much division. We're profitable now as, as far as the last quarter's earnings, and we're likely to be profitable into the future as well. Um, we're just going to raise capital in the bond market. Or we're going to raise capital some other way. We think we can do this without massively diluting shareholders. Or maybe even if, if if AMC canceled this and said, hey, instead of doing the court proceeding, let's just let us vote to issue 30 million more shares. I think at this point, retail investors would actually vote yes to that because it's only a little dilution, right? So just some ideas I'm trying to throw out there because something is definitely happening with the chart of AMC. AMC should not be up two and a half percent on a day where the Nasdaq is down 1%. And like 90 like everything else in my portfolio besides I believe Twilio is in the red today. Literally everything else that had even better earnings than AMC had. So I I, I try to find conclusions to what's going on and uh, the only thing I can think of is something good is coming. Now maybe that's tinfoil hat, but We'll ultimately see. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, not a financial planner. If I say something that sounds like financial advice, trust me, it's not. Um, be careful out there. Come to your own conclu conclusions. Don't listen to any one person. Uh, th these things can take time to play out. Even if we're ultimately going to be right, 
there's no certain timeline on this. Now, let's take a look at the Ortex data. You got a short score of 93, $707 million currently worth of short positions in AMC, estimated short interest off free flow at 27.49%, free flow out on loan at 38.41%, shares out on loan 198.3 million, days to cover 8.4, cost to borrow 253.22% over the past three months. That is up 42.34%, and you have about 82 percent share utilization so very uh healthy numbers i mean if 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 you were ever in the market to see amc go through a short squeeze you're more, more likely to see that now than you ever have been and i think that's something that's that's kind of forgotten a lot of the time um it's especially right now when amc is kind of just above five dollars under five dollars just slowly making this uptrend uh but Definitely don't forget that. Now, AMC stock is also on the threshold securities list, and that's because the failure to delivers. If we take a look at the failure to delivers for August 11th, 12.7 million for today. And the next week, you're going to start off at 11.6 million on Monday. And then by Tuesday, you're going to hit the high of 14.2 million, and then you're going to start trending down. So that can also be somewhat of a reason why AMC is performing well. Maybe you had a lot of naked shorts that were expecting this court proceeding to go through. And when it did not, they kind of got blown up and now they have to return those shares and it's taken a while to do so. That's also a possibility. And that does highlight um, the potential of maybe less of that naked shorting in, in the future. When you see a huge FTD spike like this and you're getting Adam Aaron you know, calling out the regulatory agencies that something is going wrong. We have more failure to delivers than than Apple has on any given week by like 20, 30 times. Um, that's a problem. Raises some red flags. Maybe you won't see as much of the illegal shorting activity that we have seen in the past. That's obviously far reaching. It doesn't seem like regulatory agencies give a shit about AMC. Um, but deep down, I think there is some looking into this or some nervousness by some of the uh, hedge funds institutions that maybe were naked shorting AMC. That could also be another reason why the stock's doing well. Maybe it's just less of the naked short selling. <laughs> that's a that's a possibility. OK, uh, AMC stock would be a lot higher today if it was not for that activity um, over the past couple of months. Now, uh, that's the FTD situation. Long story short, 27.57 percent estimated short interest of free float from Ortex. You have one hundred and forty two point three four million shares that are currently sold short cost of our average three hundred. 50.82%, cost bar max 359.31%, and cost of bar minimum 348.66%. When we also take a look at the option activity, something strange is happening here. And it's strange because there hasn't been a lot of option activity the last two days. But like the beginning of this week, even last week, you were seeing 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars going into AMC's options every single trading day on a one-day basis. And yesterday, you only seen $6 million worth of, of options um, getting bought in AMC. And today, you're at $2.05 million. So there's a lack of option interest here today as well, which I think, think could go along the same lines of a lot of that maybe naked shorting might be coming to a slow halt. Uh, some of the malicious option activity could come with it and could come down as well. So that could also be something that is having a positive effect on AMC stock today. But I think as far as the broader markets are concerned, there's also this that is happening. So the leverage loan yields are near 10 year highs. So what's happening is some of these yields are actually some of these bonds are starting to go BK. You're actually seeing default rates about three and a half percent. Fitch thinks that could get to four and a half or five percent by the end of this year. So I think that's kind of a reason why the markets are selling off as well. Some of your defaults are starting to get a little bit worse. At the same time, some of the economic data starting to look a little bit worse for areas such as China. And I think this is having a net positive effect on AMC. Uh, as you can even see here right now, the stock's up about 3%. That's pretty um, 
good, right? That's 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 a pretty good day when the Nasdaq is down almost one percent. And usually there's a reason for these kind of things. Usually AMC is not the stock that just runs for no reason. Usually there's something going on. So uh, that's what I have for you here in this video. Today is Friday, so obviously we're not going to be trading again until Monday. What we've seen, what, three Fridays ago now, is the judge made her ruling on a Friday in after hours. So I don't know if it, that could replay itself this week or next week or weeks to come, but Friday gets a little more interesting now because of that fact in the past. So that's it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.